A wonderful person, this is Anton, and in this video we're going to discuss a relatively recent study that was once again trying to explain dark matter by using a somewhat interesting technique. And once again, the results came out negative, but specifically by using what you see right behind me, the incredible image of the CMB or the cosmic microwave background. And so in this video, we're essentially going to discuss the most incredible and possibly the most important space image taken in the last few decades, and why this particular image is really important for studying the early universe, or more importantly, for what it actually shows us. But in order to understand what you're looking at, and in order to understand what this particular study was trying to achieve, we have to briefly discuss a little bit of history. And the story here starts in 1931. You can learn more about this in one of the videos in the description. But in 1931, the Belgian astrophysicist, who was also a Catholic priest, Georges Lemaitre, published a few really exciting papers suggesting that the early universe might actually be observable through a very specific type of radiation. And this was the result of his initial proposition that the universe was expanding and it most likely started with a tiny point. And so this guy right here, he is basically the father of the Big Bang Theory. But he actually thought that it was going to be cosmic rays. He might have been not entirely correct here. But in about three years, another physicist, Richard Tolman, actually showed that it was probably going to be something different. He was able to establish that as the universe expands and as it cools down, it's most likely going to be producing a very specific thermal spectrum. Something that in theory we could observe with certain types of telescopes but they just didn't exist back in 1934. And then approximately 14 years later, in 1948, two other physicists, Robert Herman and Ralph Alpher, combined all of these initial propositions and essentially proposed the idea behind the cosmic microwave background, a remnant of the Big Bang that should still be visible even today with a temperature for this microwave background predicted to be approximately 5 Kelvin. And though this was an interesting proposition, Nothing came out of it for at least another decade. And that's because back then there was a lot of discussion and a lot of heated debates about the origins of the universe, with a lot of physicists believing that it was basically more or less static, not really expanding, not changing much, and quite a lot smaller in size and complexity compared to what was discovered in the last few decades. But then something accidental happened in 1959. This was actually part of the NASA project called Project ECHO. The first ever passive communication satellite experiment that used two separate satellites and various balloons in order to transmit radio signals from one location on Earth to another by basically bouncing them from these enormous balloons. These balloons were covered in aluminized plastic, so they were actually perfect for reflecting a lot of different radio frequencies. But in order to try to detect these signals and to basically listen to them, researchers also constructed this. This was the Holmdel Horn antenna whose purpose was to basically intercept these signals. But something really bizarre kept happening inside the antenna, and initially nobody could explain what. By 1965, and Robert Wilson, along with Arno Penzias, reported these unusual discoveries in their 1965 paper. The paper you can find in the description. And so in essence, as the paper suggests, there was an unusual excess of heat coming from something, approximately 3.5 Kelvin higher than expected, in other words, they were getting some kind of a really bizarre microwave interference that resembled some kind of a strange background glow coming from basically everywhere, but not connected to any star, any galaxy, or any specific object. And almost right away, within just a few years, it was finally explained as that background radiation proposed by Lemaitre back in 1931. This was the first ever evidence for the Big Bang Theory and for the expanding origin of the universe. And though today it's more or less accepted by almost everyone, it took decades and decades of research to finally get here. As a matter of fact, this paper by Milan Sirkovich and Slobodan Perovich goes through a very thorough explanation involving the history behind this to basically show how we finally arrived at the idea behind the universe expanding and even accelerating its expansion, and why no other theory currently makes sense. And if you want to read this, it's in the description. Although I think one day I'll probably cover this in a separate video. But basically, all of those initial predictions in regards to the expansion of the universe and the idea of the universe coming from a much smaller point suddenly started to make sense. 
And more importantly, this was a direct proof that the universe was indeed expanding, because without this expansion, all of this cosmic microwave background would actually still be super hot, with temperatures being very close to what we find on the sun's surface. And the only reason it was not hot was because basically the universe expanded so much. But here I guess the question is, what exactly are we seeing in this microwave background? Well, it's essentially just showing us the time when the universe, and specifically the plasma in the universe, cooled down so much that all of the protons and electrons started to combine into atoms, mostly hydrogen atoms, eventually making the universe transparent, but also releasing photons that we're now observing as this background microwave light. This is actually referred to as the recombination epoch, and it happened approximately 379,000 years since the beginning of the universe. And the first direct proof for this came from the NASA satellite you see right here, known as COBE. This stands for Cosmic Background Explorer. And so between 1989 and 1993, it was finally able to provide a direct, indisputable proof for the existence of this background. But obviously, it was not a very detailed proof, mostly because back then, the technology was not there yet to conduct precise observations in outer space. And so the second satellite, known as WMAP, did a much better job. But it wasn't until about a decade ago when the European Planck satellite finally revealed the most important image, or I guess one of the most important images in astrophysics. The image you see right here. The most precise, most detailed, and most incredible observations of the cosmic microwave background. With Planck being able to extract extremely precise details, even allowing us to see very small deviations in temperature, which you basically see here as tiny blue or tiny red dots, while at the same time showing us quite a lot of anomalies. You can actually learn about some of these anomalies in one of the videos in the description, but here these observations also showed us something else super important. It confirmed that the CMB was not entirely smooth and not super uniform. It did actually have very small deviations here and there, which could be now used to investigate additional ideas or additional hypotheses. And so even though on average the temperature here is approximately 2.72 Kelvin, in some locations it's a little bit hotter, in some locations it's a little bit colder. And one of the first discoveries here was actually in regards to these unusual patches. These tiny deviations and tiny fluctuations in temperature were most likely formed by the effects we refer to as quantum fluctuations. And this is where it kind of gets really mind-blowing. Basically, it shows us this. The quantum fluctuations, also known as vacuum state fluctuations, or basically these random changes in energy even in completely empty space. And that's of course one of the main predictions behind the uncertainty principle and the field of quantum chromodynamics. And so according to these predictions, empty space can never really be empty. It always has these unusual energy fluctuations, which computer simulations predict would look like this. And so it turns out that if you actually combine this with a sudden and very explosive expansion of the universe in the first fraction of a second, it actually resembles this extremely well. In other words, what this image also shows us is that in the first non-millionth of a second, after the beginning of the universe, our universe very likely contained some kind of an energy fluctuation that suddenly expanded so much that all of these quantum fluctuations became stretched to tremendous sizes, eventually giving rise to initial overdensities that then started forming galaxies, the cosmic web, and all of the other structures in the entire universe. And so here, after decades of research, we also suddenly had the proof for the quantum physics for the idea known as the inflation of the universe, and of course, once again, for the Big Bang Theory. Which is of course why this image is so ridiculously important. And on top of this, in February of 2015, by using the data from this telescope and by using this image, researchers officially confirmed that the universe is probably 13.8 billion years old, while also establishing the value for the Hubble constant, or the expansion of the universe, at 67.8 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Which is of course why this image is so important for modern cosmology and actually provides important proof for a lot of different ideas that were previously either speculative or maybe not entirely understood. And it took a long time to get here. But this image obviously hides a lot of additional mysteries, including the mysteries of dark matter and dark energy. And that's because a lot of these patches and a lot of these individual fluctuations also contain additional information. So basically, this doesn't just show us quantum fluctuations, it also shows us the distribution of matter in the universe, 
and even how this matter interacts with all of this early light. And so here, by zooming in on one of these individual patches, it becomes possible to uncover if there's maybe something else going on here, and something else is producing additional effects that should not be there. And well, one of these propositions is in regards to the so-called dark sector. Essentially, a kind of a hypothetical shadow realm of various invisible particles that could maybe explain dark matter to some extent. And that's because in the last few decades, there has also been this other problem. Despite many different propositions and many different experiments, including some of the most complex and most expensive detectors ever, we still have not found dark matter particles of any kind, and two best candidates, WIMPs or axions, have not been discovered anywhere. I mean, there have been signs here and there, but nothing definitive and nothing concrete yet. And so, as a result, additional explanations start to be proposed. One of them is the dark sector. Basically the idea that, in our universe, apart from all of the matter and all of the photons visible to us, there's also this entire realm that's completely invisible. It could actually contain its own particles, its own forces, and obviously its own photons. Dark photons. And it basically kind of coexists on top of our own realm. Now this idea is obviously kind of speculative and will be almost impossible to prove, but there's maybe one way to prove it based on one of the propositions. According to this proposition, once in a while, some of the dark photons in this invisible matter universe would maybe change into regular photons, and vice versa. Some of the photons from our universe may convert to dark photons in certain locations. And specifically when there are certain interactions with electrons, as various photons from the cosmic microwave background interact with the plasma of electrons surrounding various clusters of galaxies. And so in that dark photon prediction, or this dark sector prediction, we actually expect certain locations in the cosmic microwave background to contain just a little bit more patchiness in the location where there are known galactic clusters, especially really massive ones. In other words, by observing the slight deviations inside of these really slight deviations of the CMB, it might become possible to prove the existence of these dark photons. Which is exactly what Fiona McCarthy and her team did in her study. But by conducting this very thorough research, they once again discovered nothing. No evidence of any dark photon or dark sector anywhere in the CMB, and once again, no evidence of dark matter as some kind of a hidden sector or dark sector coexisting with our known universe. Although in this case, the researchers mentioned that this study does not completely invalidate dark photons yet, but it just sets an extremely stringent value for the existence of these dark photons. But in short, because nothing was discovered, it once again means that, well, the mystery of dark matter is still as mysterious as before, while also showing us once again how absolutely incredible this image is and how much you can actually see in it, assuming you know what you're looking for. And so in the end, despite the lack of evidence for dark photons, this is still a really exciting research, and by using similar techniques, scientists might actually discover something else entirely in the next few years. And so in other words, this research makes an important discovery in terms of methods. We now have a new way to study the universe by using the cosmic microwave background. And that means that in some of the future studies, by comparing the cosmic microwave background with the distribution of galaxies, we might find even more anomalies or more unexplained phenomena like the one we've discussed in one of the videos in the description. And so on that note, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention. It's always fun to talk about the CMB and of course its importance in cosmology, but it's also even more fun to talk about new discoveries or new propositions made by observing this incredible light. And so once there are some additional propositions or someone else discovers something else, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.